comincerei con uh, il benvenuto a Vito Borrelli, vice capo rappresentanza della Commissione Europea in Italia. E I'm going to switch to English because I want to invite also Gerda Verburg with us. <laughs> So we can sit here and we are going to, please Vito, yes, and here. So Gennaro Migliore have been highlighting what's the crucial role in this specific time in history. And so before we start, as you know, we started this EU Agri-Food Week talking about culture and then we started talking about soil, we talked about health and then uh, again connecting designers, connecting students, connecting activists, farmers. So we spent like the last three days connecting the dots and seeing how much food is at the epicenter. But this time in history is pretty unique and we are facing huge challenges. So before starting I want to launch the video of uh, the Commissioner for Agriculture that I think is going to set the stage for the next conversation. So here we have the keynote of uh, our Commissioner for Agriculture, Mr. Ladies Bocikowski. and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to speak to you today. I'm sorry that I cannot join you in person to enjoy the people, the food, and the scenery of Campania. I also wish that I could speak to you in a more positive and uh, peaceful context. However, recent events have dictated that this cannot be the case. The war in Ukraine is not only a violation of human rights and international law, it also poses a threat to global food security. The consequences of the Russian aggression demonstrate the importance of safeguarding food security at all times and uh, at all places around the globe. This objective, enshrined in the founding treaties of the European Union, is today as important as ever. It is clear that the coming months will bring many challenges to our food systems. Let me assure you that the Commission is carefully monitoring the situation. We are paying close attention to the impact of the war on food security and on our farming sector. But we are uh, not only monitoring, we are also taking action. In March, we adopted the communication on safeguarding food security and reinforcing the resilience of food systems. The communication sets out actions in three areas. First, it presents our immediate actions to safeguard food security in Ukraine and uh, around the world. This means providing assistance to Ukrainian farmers and scaling up humanitarian aid with our international partners. Second, we have addressed the challenge of stability in the European Union's food system with a range of measures to support our farmers and maintain affordability for our citizens. Finally, we confirm our agenda to make our food system more sustainable and resilient in the years to come. Security, stability, sustainability. These are the three words that define our response. To protect food security, we must ensure that our food system is resilient to external shocks like the one we are now experiencing. We must also set out to improve our sustainability as climate change and environmental degradation pose ever-growing risk to food production. This is why uh, CAP strategic plans with their support for resilience and sustainability will be a crucial part of our response. The Commission has already sent observation letters to the 19 member states who submitted their uh, common agriculture policy strategic plans by January. The analysis of the other plans is ongoing. 
the first batch of letters were published at the end of April. The remaining letters will be published in due course. In our letters, the Commission examined how Member States identified their needs, the effectiveness of the interventions uh, they intend to imp implement and the targets they have set. We now expect Member States to address the observations and revise their plans. The Commission expects real changes from Member States in order to meet their legal obligations and to effectively address the challenges of their farming sectors. The Commission is also aware that the context in which Member States prepared their plans has changed following the Russian invasion of Ukraine. The Commission has therefore stressed to Member States that their CAP strategic plans must strengthen the resilience of the sector. Here we need uh, actions that boost biogas production, improve energy efficiency, advance protein crop production, and develop knowledge and innovation systems. We hope that Member States will react rapidly and constructively to our observation letters. Bilateral meetings with national authorities are ongoing uh, as we shape the final plans. Farmers, stakeholders, and citizens must must also be part of this discussion. The Commission is committed to a constructive and transparent process. As long as this process is followed, we are ready to approve the plans rapidly so that farmers know exactly how they will be supported in the coming years. In the face of our current challenges, the importance of strong support from the Common Agriculture Policy has been made ever more clear. Let us not forget that the Common Agriculture Policy was established in the aftermath of the Second World War, and it supported the farmers of Europe throughout the challenges of the Cold War. At the heart of the CAP in the past and in its future is solidarity. Solidarity within society, between our farmers and our citizens, to ensure that hunger remains in our history. If we fully embrace this power of solidarity, I have no doubt that we can overcome our current difficulties and progress in our long-term goals for a resilient farming sector and sustainable food security in Europe. Thank you. Thank you so much. Actually, we hope he's going to come soon to visit us in Italy. But for sure, what we have been talking about during these days has been highlighting all the challenges he was showing us. Yesterday, we have been talking about energy. We have been talking about the crucial role of all the players within the entire food value chain. And we clearly understand that there's some ch th something we need to change. So I'm really glad to have you both here because I have to say welcome to Gerda, welcome to Italy. Actually, Gerda Verburg, she's leading the Scaling Up Nutrition Movement, but she's actually a cornerstone for the entire UN system when we're talking about nutrition with huge challenges. And she has been one of the powerhouse behind the UN Food System Summit. We have been doing tons of activations during last year. And on the other end, we have the voice of Europe. Europe uh, is clearly playing a crucial role. So I want to start this conversation really say, starting to weave what are the actions that both Europe and we at the local and global level we can do. Because at the end, hunger and access to nutrition, this is the real need. We're talking about the essential needs. So first of all, Vito, Vito Borelli, the vice director of um, our representative office in Italy. We are very glad you're here, but actually you are almost at home. So <laughs> it's a pleasure to have you here with us. Actually, I, well, I came by car from Rome this morning, so <laughs> I've just arrived. But uh, I would like just to start thanking Sara and uh, Food for Future for organizing this event uh, in Pollica. 
and uh, more generally in the Cilento area because, as she said, I feel very much at home because I was born only 50 kilometers from here in Sapri. So uh, coming here for work is uh, a première for me, but it's really very exciting and very glad to be able to reach out to people that uh, I feel very close to my heart. So thanks again, Sara, for inviting me. As Sara said, I am the Deputy Head of Representation of the European Commission in Italy. Uh, this is a very uh, interesting job, although it's not very well known. Not everybody knows that in all member states there are representations, sorts of uh, embassies uh, in member states that have the main role of communicating to uh, the people in the territory of their country about uh, European policies, European programs, and so try to fill in that gap that inevitably exists between headquarters in Brussels and local realities. So this is uh, a great opportunity to talk in these days about uh, uh, one of the cornerstone of this uh, current uh, uh, commission, which is led uh, for the first time by a woman, uh, Ursula von der Leyen, and uh, who has decided to put on the forefront of her agenda, of her work plan for the five years ahead, uh, the theme of uh, environment through the uh, fight the climate change and through the sustainability of the uh, environment. Uh, useless to say that this priority has been put into risk by a number of emergencies that we were not expecting. First of all, the pandemic uh, uh, crisis uh, that has obviously uh, put the accent and the attention on other themes although at the end of the day they are very much connected because, I mean, the fact of the rising of new viruses and of new contagion, of new, uh, um, of new problems, health problems, is very much related to the health of the world environment. And uh, the risk was that our efforts uh, to reach out uh, and to reach the objectives that had been designed under the new European Green Deal were put at risk. Uh, you know that this great initiative by the European Commission has the ambitious objectives to go to reach a mm, climate neutral uh, environment uh, and in 2050 and has identified also a mid term uh, review in 2030 in which we expect to reach out um, the objective of 55% reduction of CO2 um, uh, pollution. Uh, in that sense, uh, um, the pandemic crisis has not stopped these objectives. On the contrary, uh, there has been an absolutely new approach from the European Commission with the launch of the Next Generation Europe, which is this great initiative that provides to member states the possibility and the financial support to relaunch their economies uh, after these uh, very serious uh, uh, health crisis. And now we come to our days, uh, and I think that the uh, intervention by Commissioner Wojciechowski very clearly put the accent on that, and uh, uh, I'm talking of course of the war in Ukraine, that uh, on top of all the rest, which is certainly probably more important because the sovereignty of a country has uh, unacceptably been violated, uh, but has a number of collateral effects, and one of them is related to the food and to the difficulty to provide food to those countries that were primarily uh, provided by the Ukrainian uh, wheat and other um, uh, materials. In that sense, uh, the European Commission is making a great effort these days, I'm repeating just what the Commissioner just said, but to assure that uh, the blockage that has been made by the Russians in the Odessa harbor and in the vicinity uh, is uh, um, interrupted with a view to continue the provision of food to these countries which are mostly affected. But in any case, even the war in Ukraine is not going to stop our action in uh, the strategy that uh, we call uh, uh, New um, European Green Deal, but which has a specific part, 
within it that is related to food, and we call it the farm to fork strategy. I think uh, this has been mentioned several times in these days. I suppose what are the objectives of this farm to fork strategy? But I would like just very briefly to recall the main, uh, the main keywords. Again, repeating what the Commissioner just said. One is sustainability, the other one is safety, the other one is resilience, but I would like to add a fourth one, which is equity, because equity is fundamental in order to allow people not to have to pay for the price of the ecologic transition, because we know that this transition has a price to pay. There are some uh, sacrifice to be made, but through the um, just transition initiative, we call it like that, uh, transizione equa, fair transition, the European Commission has really um, focused on the necessity for people to be helped in order to contribute to this transition without having to pay too high a price. And we will see perhaps later more in detail what specific actions we are expecting from both producers, from consumers, from distributors, because of course we want to make sure that the whole filiera, the whole passage from producers to consumers is carefully monitored in order to make sure that citizens, that people, can benefit from the uh, advantages of this important transition. Thank you so much, Vito. Thank you so much because you have been talking about uh, the farm to fork strategy, but everything for us is interconnected under the One Health uh, approach uh, that anyway need to keep everything connected, everything connected. So I want to explain briefly the reason why we decided to come in Campania region to host this kind of summit. Campania region, from our perspective, is a little bit the Neville of what is happening here in our country when we are talking about food and innovation. In Campania region, we are going to host pretty soon the, say, the agri-food hub that is one of the results of the next generation EU initiative. So we are going to host here the most important hub, the national hub for agri-food. On the other hand, you heard probably, we were talking in Italian, but you understood that we were talking about culture, we were talking about our ecological parks, the capital of the Mediterranean diet. But then there are some iconic producers that are representing our Italian identity around the world, plus tons of innovation and a region that in the last years has been investing so much in innovation. Maybe sometimes are undercover solutions, but let's say here there's a lot. So, this is the reason why we decided to start to talk about those topics uh, here. And here we are, of course, uh, in a local environment that holds tons of treasures, but on the other end, we're facing tons of challenges. Because at the European level, here in this region, we have the highest rate of obesity. You know, the capital of Mediterranean diet, on the other end, the highest rate of, uh, rate of obesity. And on the other end, we are talking about uh, a culture where we are very much focused on producing a few miles away, implementing strategies to say, tell in every environment that we need to go to the farm to fork strategy, being very focused on sourcing our ingredients, but then the challenges are at the global level. And I want Gerda to share what are the challenges and to challenge the people that are going to talk after us. Because after, we're going to talk with people coming from great, huge food industries, but also talking about bioeconomy and talking about all the things that now we need to do. Gerda, she's the one that is challenging everyone, all the world leaders on that. Stop, 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 Sara. Thank you very much for bringing me to Polika. Let me first congratulate you because you live in a, in a beautiful place. And let me thank very much the mayor I have a challenge for you later on uh, as well, but uh, great leadership to open up um, this beautiful castle and to have this very inspiring uh, um, event here. Because I wasn't able to understand everything uh, that was, uh, has been said because the passion of you as Italians is so big that you are speaking so rapidly that I cannot, you couldn't even understand it, but I could see and read and hear and. And, and smell almost the passion with which you are uh, working. Um, 
then I would like to, to focus a little bit on what we do. Because as Sarah, uh, Sarah said, I am the coordinator of a movement. A movement that is dealing with uh, nutrition. Started 12 years ago. Um, because at that time there was a, a, a report launched by the Lancet, forget the name, but it's very, uh, very uh, important uh, uh, um, magazine, um, a very big authority that said, you will never be able to end hunger and malnutrition for two reasons. And the first reason was that everybody was doing something in his or her own silo. So one was driving uh, this part, one was driving, let's say, innovation, another was driving the virtual reality, another was driving, well, um, because nutrition requires collaboration, joint working, systems working. The second was um, ending hunger and malnutrition, be it undernutrition or overnutrition, and obesity very often is, an, uh, is the impact of uh, not the right nutrients and sometimes also uh, an overload of, uh, of uh, food and nutrition. Um, because ending hunger and malnutrition is a matter of political will. So what you need to see is politicians who are taking care of their own society, who are investing in the possibility to have a healthy uh, lifestyle, um, and also have healthy, nutritious, affordable, and accessible food. Well, that was a lot. So that was the start of the uh, Scaling Up Nutrition Movement. Governments needed to sign up to become a member. No membership fee, but what they committed was to work together. Until that moment, uh, hunger and malnutrition was considered as the responsibility of the Minister of Health. As soon as there was uh, hunger, um, then uh, uh, hungry children needed to be treated. Think about all the pictures that you can remember of hungry children uh, that were lying there, almost dying, uh, etc. Now we defined it is not only a matter of the Minister of Health, it's also a matter of the Minister of Food, Fisheries, Forestries, uh, social protection, education, and economy. Because nutrition is not only defining, and I'm talking to people who are following the Medi Mediterranean uh, diet, you know um, good food is an investment in your physical resilience and your physical uh, capabilities, but also in your cognitive development. And the first thousand days of a child are crucial, from the conception of the mother until the, the, the second uh, anniversary of a child is crucial for the potential of people. Because your brains are building up and the infrastructure, the connection between the different parts of your brains uh, uh, are connected during these first thousand days. And if this potential is lost, and it is up to 40% uh, uh, of your lifetime um, uh, uh, potential, then it will, be never, it will never be repairable. So it is irreversible. And this is why uh, talking about nutrition and talking about the quality of food and treatment of children and people is so important. And it's also important, and that's my first uh, uh, request to the, um, to the government of Italy, but also to the European Commission, take extra care of women. Because women play an important role in the food systems, but they also in the food system, but they also play an, an important role in the family, and they have specific needs. And too often, and we have seen it in COVID, and we see it now in the impact of the Russia-Ukraine uh, crisis, um, in many developing countries in Africa, Asia, and Latin America, women and girls are suffering first, most and longest. So please think about and have a special attention uh, for uh, girls and, and women in food systems and in uh, nutrition. Now the impact of, the, of uh, COVID and the uh, Ukrainian-Russia war, war is huge because in many of our 65 member countries food prices have gone up by 20% uh, until sometimes 50%. And that combined with fuel prices and energy prices for the poorest people who cannot afford, who have to live from, well, sometimes not more than $2 a day, you can imagine what it means. 
they want to feed their children, they want to maintain their family, but they need to compromise. And very often what they do is uh, that the women are trying to get the best products to, uh, to present a meal to the family and then um, first feed others and then eat the rest. So sometimes uh, uh, women and girls end up with a soup that you can define as soup, but if you look at the nutrients, it's almost nothing. So please keep this uh, in mind. But I don't want to uh, dwell around um, in our 65 member countries because I want to come, uh, come back to uh, Polika. Thank you for bringing me here to Polika. Because driving already from the uh, airport and coming from the high road, I was really enjoying uh, the landscape and I could already see how well this region is doing. Thank you very much. And I was further inspired by your contribution and the contribution of how you are dealing with uh, Polika and with um, uh, restoring and uh, bringing up the landscape and the foodscape. Because this is amazing. So let me start with you, Mr. Uh, Mayor. You can play an important role, not only here, but by inspiring other mayors. Uh, they need to lead their foodscape development, if you want, uh, bringing the planetary needs and the people's needs together. You can do a hell of a lot, not a hell of a lot, but very much, because you know what you're talk talking about. You have the passion. And you cannot leave this to two governments uh, alone because um, uh, dealing with good food but also trying to maintain the landscape or to prevent um, further uh, degeneration but promote regeneration um, of, the, of the ecosystem is an investment where you need different stakeholders as well. And there you can also make an appeal to companies, because companies have an important role uh, to play. And here's my second uh, uh, request and appeal. If you have companies around, not the small and medium-sized companies, uh, but the bigger companies, because the small and medium-sized companies, very much they are involved. And listening to all of you, I was inspired by your commitment to be part of the solution. Bigger companies, however, can do much more. Many of them have, the, have their corporate social responsibility. Sorry, a business need to make a, a, a profit, but out of this Ukraine-Russia crisis, we can see that fuel companies, uh, oil companies, are making a hell of a lot of profit. And I have read one of my fellow Dutch and UK uh, companies, Shell, has made an, an ever high record uh, profit during the first quarter. Can we ask these companies to do something to ease the impact of the, uh, of the war uh, on normal people, normal people, on households, on societies, on, uh, com on communities? Can we ask them to do more to become really part of the problem? Be oh, sorry, really part of the solution, because it's obvious. They are also just like we, but they are also a big part of the problem. And by behaving there, uh, by changing their behavior, they can become a bigger part of the solution. And it's about time to knock on their door and to do more than only investing 2% of their profit into uh, um, uh, corporate social responsibility. More is needed to safeguard our planet, to uh, save our ecosystem, but also to invest in people and people's um, uh, potential. Then I would like to um, also um, uh, talk a little bit about the, um, the Italian uh, government, what they can do, because very often, and Mr. Mayor, maybe my... Um, Italian was not good enough. Maybe you were making also the point about financial means uh, that are needed to do even more. Um, is that I think the Italian government could um, uh, do also more um, uh, and more smart. Um, because the CAP, the Common Agricultural Policy, uh, you were talking about and the European Commissioner was talking about, there is money behind, there is budget behind. And focusing uh, only, only on the green economy is okay, 
but I think it's about time to rethink a little bit how you can combine uh, the future and the sustainability of both the ecosystem, but also people, healthy and nutritious and productive uh, people. So rethink a little bit and make sure that your Minister of Agriculture is focusing not only on increasing yield and improving uh, yield, but also thinking about and what does it mean for people to be able to uh, buy uh, affordable uh, and accessible and healthy uh, food. So I think there is something to do because I've read the farm to fork strategy and it's saving our planet. It's not doing, uh, it's not saving all uh, the people and I think that's also an important responsibility of the European Commission. Furthermore, the effort or the Italian government is investing in agriculture. But the Italian government also has made a commitment in the climate summit, which is called the, the um, national determined contribution. And if it's okay, uh, there is also something about uh, uh, food systems and improving the way of producing and dealing uh, with food. Bring out that budget, invest it, and when it can be done in Campania, it can be done in other regions of Italy as well. But you as Campania inspiring the rest of Italy and maybe inspiring the rest of Europe would be great. But knock on the door of the government to bring in also this uh, budget to invest in uh, an ecosystem uh, um, resilient, uh, uh, healthy uh, and, and affordable food systems food system. I think this is uh, a way forward. And then I have a request to all of you. And again, I was inspired by all you had to say. The next point is to see where all these parts of the solutions fit. Because I have learned that bringing out brilliant solutions alone is not uh, doing the trick. But trying to find your part in the puzzle of uh, systems of multi-sectoral, multi-stakeholder collaboration, creating win-wins for everyone involved, that is the trick. So Sarah, with you, with your power and the power of all your, uh, your team and with support of the, of the minister and a little bit of support of Europe, I think... A lot of support of Europe, <laughs> not a little bit. Uh, I think bringing the people together and making them work together to create win-win solutions for each and everyone, leaving no one behind. That is really what should be done uh, right now. And that's my day-to-day -day, uh, challenge and our day-to-day -day activity, uh, doing it in a way that suits to the culture and ways of working here in the region, because as I used to say, in Vietnam, they have a different approach co compared to Bangladesh, to um, Cote d'Ivoire uh, and to other countries. So do it in your own way, but invest in people and the planet alike. Thank you. Thank you so much, Gerda. I know you have a flight to catch, so I'm going to keep it short. But I want to answer to some of your challenges, because first of all, I can proudly say that the Future Food Institute, together with the municipality of Polica, is going to host from uh, June 13 the European program to empower women in agri-food that are going to come here, and Polica is going to host the program. So this is something that we will do, at least starting doing things. Yeah. First, and then second, I can say that here we have some representative from big companies that already came and are already working with us because, can you stand up please? I want to invite, we, we have Danone and we have Nestle here with us. <laughs> Don't be shy because they are already here to be connected with the ecosystem and to be part of the change. So, and then we have uh, big farmers unions, we have small ones, we have big ones. So what we have been trying to do is really to start this conversation bringing on board all the different voices because we are clearly understanding that we alone, we can do nothing. And the solution is probably the number 17 and starting doing clear partnership and concrete partnerships uh, to make all, all the things happen because if not, nothing is going to change. And However, partnerships should start locally absolutely. and people should work together yes. because let me say something that might sound a bit unpopular 
but uh, you know that uh, Italy is not one of the best user of uh, cohesion funds. And very often it, it comes up, it boils up to local difficulties in getting together and agree even from the administrative point of view on how to best use these funds. Funds are a lot from Europe. The support from Europe is huge, even too big sometimes to really exploit completely. And we see it now with the PNRR, with the Piani Nazionali di Ripresa e Resilienza. We have lots of money, but the risk, and I think it was said clearly by our Commissioner Gentiloni on an interview to La Stampa yesterday, the risk is that we, if we don't implement reforms very quickly, we risk to go into recession and not be able to exploit this potential. So we start from the local and try to create partnerships in order to make it work. And let me add to what Vito uh, said. Last year there was the, um, the UN Food System Summit, um, a building on a national and regional food systems dialogues where all different stakeholders were around the table to discuss immediate solution, mid-term solutions and long-term solutions for their food systems to invest in people, create decent jobs for next generations and at the same time invest in uh, the planet. If um, this is happening here, please continue uh, uh, just now and come with concrete win-win uh, plans, um, uh, proposals. And if you haven't done it, Mr. Mayor, please collect everyone together with Sarah, together with Sarah and, and her team, you can make this happen. Bring all the stakeholders around uh, the table. Uh, thank you, Madam. Uh, in Polyga, we try to, to do something about uh, collect all the energy to change uh, many things in Italy, but we are very ambitious, so we don't want to change only a small part of Polica or Cilento. We want to change uh, Italy in a, in a part. We want, to, we want to have all the energy of the citizen, because for us it's very important to, to change the culture way. Sorry for my English, it's very bad. I, I try to, to, to explain why my passion is the, the, the first reason, because uh, I use the passion because the, the reason is uh, to have uh, a good land for the future. And uh, Vito, thank you to say here, yeah, Vito uh, Eccellentano. Uh, uh, Vito came from Sapri near here and uh, I'm very happy because uh, um, Vito I have the, the good, uh, the good uh, view of the territory and uh, explain, it's necessary to explain to everybody the right way. So for the, for the found, we need found, but not only. We need the, the right way to spend fund. And uh, probably if we have uh, many, many resources uh, to spend, uh, it's a small part of the work. But uh, if uh, other people choose the, the same way of Polica, so to, to create a way to stay together, we have uh, an opportunity to do much more than now for the future. So one voice, one clear proposal. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Then ask I'm, to for the I'm totally agree. I'm yeah. totally agree. I'm totally agree. And last but not least, because they are telling me she has to go. We invited already you again at the beginning of July to come here because you were challenging mayors and we're going to have here together with UNESCO a boot camp training mayors coming from all over the world that are going to study the model that we are implementing here. So with UNESCO ICAR that is the network of sustainable and inclusive cities, we are going to start this initiative. The beginning of July, we're going to have several mayors coming from all over the world. And also, yeah, also, <laughs> we invited him as well, and we started a, a joint program between Polica and the schools of New York. Uh, so, many initiatives. Thank you very much. I'm very, very inspired by you. Have a great uh, event. Uh, I'm going back, but um, I'll Be back soon. I take you, I take you with me in.
and my heart. Thank you so much, Gerda.